For those of you who have seen me before, to make time visible, the number one thing that we do is we distinguish between wall clocks and working clocks. That right back there is a wall clock hanging on the wall. It tells you the hour of the day. To teach executive function skills, we recommend a working clock as well. They can be the same clock, but your language has to be different. You need to say, boys and girls, the wall clock says it's 11 o'clock. But the working clock moves around and it goes where you are doing work. If you're doing homework at your kitchen table, it's the working clock. If you're in the bathroom doing your makeup, it's the working clock. If you're in the kitchen cooking, it's the working clock. If you're in a classroom teaching, it's the working clock by the whiteboard. With our working clock, the reason we call it the working clock is we make time visible. We have two recommendations. Your clock ideally has a glass face and a metallic rim. The purpose of a glass face is that if you have a working clock and a dry erase marker, you can show and make time visible. Boys and girls, it is 1.35. We are going to work on our creative writing projects for 10 minutes. Always start in the middle. Always go down the minute hand and verbally say five, 10 minutes. Come back and shade the available volume of time. The reason you must start in the middle and go down the minute hand is we want to visually mimic and mime the sweep of time. Don't go like doot doot and go backwards. You really want to show that they're visualizing time as a movement. A lot of people like the time timer, but here's the difference. This matches the clock. And the other thing is, we, we sometimes for kids don't want the red to disappear. Because as time is moving, I can now look back and self-monitor how did I use the time that I had available. I can reflect and see did I use that time effectively? And I can see how much time I have left. So I'm mapping and I'm making time visible. If you have a clock with a plastic clock face, you can't use a dry erase marker. The plastic absorbs the dry erase and you will forever have that 10 minutes on your clock. <laughs> so if you have a glass clock face, it will do that. Now, the other reason why we recommend a metallic rim is because we also need students to be able to think in what we call time markers. Every person thinks in a time marker, all right? And at our midpoint, we want kids to know, do I have any time robbers? If I get to here and I haven't used my time effectively, I need to know what's robbing my time. <laughs> now, I talked a lot about that last time, so I'm not going to repeat it. But the biggest thing that we found was that we needed students to see time markers and to be able to calculate time. The way that we use time markers is we actually use magnets to mark the time. So a student might spend a minute or so getting ready. They start their work. When we use magnets, we don't plunk it here because we want students to feel the movement of time. I'm going to work for five, ten minutes and here is my midpoint check-in. The thing is, I think everybody does this. When you're getting dressed in the morning, oops, I lost my magnet. When you're getting dressed in the morning and you're in the shower and you go to hop in the shower, I don't think you hop in the shower and say, I'm gonna shower until the hot water runs out. <laughs> you say, I have to be out of the shower by what? 10 after. I've got to be out of my bedroom by 10:30. We need kids to picture, okay, I'm working on my sentences. I should have two sentences by my midpoint. I should have four sentences by there. We really need them to be visualizing a mark in the future time. So the thing is, we found, though, that a lot of